In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to array variables. An array variable, also known simply as an array, is a special type of variable that will allow you to store more than one data item. As you'll see, arrays are incredibly useful and will allow you to write some very useful real-world applications. Programs that use arrays will make more sense if you visualise what's going on behind the scenes inside the computer's memory. And before we look at this, it's worth thinking about what's going on behind the scenes when you use regular variables. I've written a very simple program here which makes use of two regular string variables, one called pet and another called animal. This line of code declares the variable called pet. When this line of code executes, a small piece of the computer's memory is set aside by the operating system and it's given a name, pet. When the second line of code executes, the string cat is put inside that piece of memory. We've assigned a value to it. The third line of code simply outputs the contents of that variable. The program then goes on to assign a different value to the same variable. This time, we're putting the string dog into that variable. The original contents of the variable are overwritten. We've lost the cat. And then we output the contents of the variable again. So this time, we're outputting dog. Once we've done that, we declare another variable. This time, we're declaring a string variable called animal. The operating system will set aside a different piece of memory and allow us to refer to it by the name animal. We're assigning the value horse to the variable called animal. And then we output it. This line of code takes a copy of what's in animal and puts it into pet, overwriting the dog which is already there. We can see that we're assigning the content of one variable to another because there are no double quotes around the word animal. And then finally, we output pet, which of course now contains the word horse. Suppose for a moment I wanted my program to store several different types of pet. I could do something like this with regular variables. I've declared five regular string variables and I've assigned a value to each. And I can output one of those pets like this. But here's the problem. If I have many more than just five pets, and I want to do some processing that involves all of them, for example, to search for a particular pet or to sort them into order, then I'm going to have a lot of problems with this approach. This is where array variables come in very, very handy. First, I'm going to declare an array. And now I'm going to assign some values to it. So what's going on behind the scenes? In my declaration, I've said that I want to set up an array variable called pets and that it's going to contain five pieces of data, which will all be strings. When this line of code executes, the operating system will set aside a group of memory locations, which I can refer to collectively as pets. The memory locations are contiguous. In other words, they are right next to each other. Each memory location, which is part of the array, is called an element. And these elements are numbered starting from zero. These numbers are called index numbers. And if I want to do something with one of these elements, then I need to refer to it by its index number. So you can see in the next five lines of code, I'm assigning a value to each of those elements. Element number zero will contain the word cat. Element number one will contain the word dog, and so on. If I want to output one of those elements, then I do so like this. 
Again, I'm referring to an element by its index number. In the same way as using regular variables, I can assign a different value to one of those elements later on in the program, like this. So, I've overwritten the hamster with a canary. I can also do this. I'm assigning the contents of one element to another, overwriting what was originally there. So you can see that accessing the elements of an array variable is very similar to working with a regular variable, except you have to get used to using index numbers. Now because each element has an index number, I can also do this. I've declared a variable of type integer and I've assigned it the value 3. So this reads as pets3. When I run the code, I'm outputting the budgie, pet number 3. Assign a different value to that integer and I'll output a different pet. I'm going to do something now which might strike you as rather strange, but you'll see the power of being able to do this later on. Instead of saying i, I'm going to say i plus 2 inside the square brackets. So which pet do you think this is going to output? This time it's the horse. If i has a value of 2, then I'm referring to element number 4 of the array. By the way, I called the variable i for no particular reason other than it's an index number, i for index. I suppose that's something of a convention. You could have just as easily named it p, p for pointer, because you're pointing to a particular element of the array. It's up to you. Now, the real power of using an array variable is that we can access each element in turn with a relatively small amount of code. I'm going to use a for loop to vary the value of i, like this. I'm displaying each element of the array one after another. Now here's a word of warning. If I try to access an element of the array that doesn't exist, my program will crash. Let's suppose I try this. Previously, i was varying from 0 to 4. The loop was running while i was less than 5. But now, the loop will run while i is less than 6. i is going to vary from 0 to 5. My program has crashed. System.indexOutOfRange exception. If ever you see that runtime error, it means that you're trying to access something that doesn't exist. Now when I wrote this program, I knew how many data items I was going to be working with, so I declared an array of five strings. But there will be times that you don't know how big the array needs to be. Imagine a scenario in which you are reading the data from an external file, or perhaps capturing it from the user interface. C Sharp gives us a number of different ways to declare an array, particularly if you don't know in advance how big it needs to be. We'll take a look at some of those scenarios in a later lesson. But for now, let's just imagine that I don't know the size of this array. I can do this. Pets.length is the length of the array. It's the number of items in the array. So that reads as a 5.
The difference is that this for loop will work for an array of any size. By the way, you can scan an array using a while loop rather than a for loop. The main difference is that it's up to you to increment the variable which you're using to reference each element of the array. Why don't you give this a try yourself? Declare an array of perhaps 10 different elements. It's up to you what data you put in there. It could be animals, people's names, cities of the world. Then try scanning the array using a for loop or a while loop like I've done here. In the next video, I'll show you how to perform something called a linear search. That is, how to scan an array variable to see if it contains a particular item.